Hello, everybody. Can you hear me? Hello. Good evening, teacher. Hello. Good evening. How are you? I'm good. Hello. Thank you for asking. Okay. Good to see you and hear you. <laughs> okay. Great. Um, let's begin. I'm going to share my screen with you now with the audio. There it is. Can you see my screen? Just before I begin, let me check something. Let's see if everything is in order. Yeah, okay, good. Let me check. Yeah, that's it. Oh, but this is not the beginning. <laughs> Let's go to the beginning. Okay, that's the beginning. All right, Jennifer. Una pregunta, teacher. Eh, ya pasó lista. No, todavía no. Acabamos de comenzar a pasar. Oh, okay. Okay, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> okay. All right, let's begin. Pasemos la asistencia, pues. Un poco de despeinado. Ni modo. All right. Um, today is Monday the 14th. So I'm going to call out your names, everybody. Ana Patricia. I'm here. Okay, good. Thank you. Benjamin Alejandro. Benjamin Alejandro. No. Brenda Adriana. Brenda Adriana. Cesar Alexander López. Present teacher. Ok. Tienen la luz al fondo. <laughs> ok. Elisa Arely López. I'm here. Ok. Thank you. Hugo Giovanni Pérez. Hugo. Present. Present teacher. Present. Hi. Ok. It is Janet. Ok, Hugo. Thank you. It is Janet Martínez. Present teacher. Thank you. Irving Hiroki Kimura. Mr. Kimura, it's not here. Janet Jacqueline Cárcamo. Present teacher. Thank you. Janet Carolina Rivera, Villanueva. Janet Carolina Rivera, Villanueva. No. Jennifer Noemi Menjivar, Menjivar. Por ahí, ah, sí, me preguntó hace ratito, ¿verdad? Jennifer Noemi. Y a ver, para estar seguro. Jennifer Noemi. Jocelyn Gabriela Martínez. Present. Thank you. José Aías López. Present. Thank you. José Francisco Aguilar. Present teacher. Thank you. Karen Xiomara López. Karen Xiomara López. No. Karina Yasmin Nuila. Present teacher. Thank you. Luz Virginia Pérez de Calderón. Present. Thank you. Melissa Guadalupe oh, Méndez. Present teacher. Thank you. Recuerden que Mama. hay que mantener el micrófono no. apagadito. Yo no sé la tira sabe. Ok. Mantengamos siempre el micrófono así en silencio para que cualquier sonido de fondo no haga interferencia. Ok, veamos. Michelle Beatriz Díaz. Thank you. Pamela Lisbeth Flores. Pamela Lisbeth Flores. Ah, ya la vi. Ok. Thank you. Roberto Carlos Cuellar. Present teacher. Thank you. Sandra Maritza Serrano Maraona. 
Thank you. Selma Yamilet Peña. Present teacher. Thank you. Teresa de Jesús Cruz. Present teacher. Thank you. Victoria Ingrid Leal. I'm here. Okay. Thank you. 23 people connected. Someone in the chat. Have you mentioned me? Yes, Benjamin, I have mentioned you. Ahorita te pongo. I yes, am so you. sorry. It's okay. Don't I didn't worry. hear you. It's okay. Don't worry. Okay. Un segundo llamado. Tal vez algunos se han incorporado. Ben, Brenda Adriana. Is Brenda here? Brenda, no. Irving Hiroki. Irving Hiroki. Janet Carolina. Present teacher. Thank you. Jennifer Noemi. Present teacher. Thank you. Karen Xiomara. Present teacher. Thank you. Okay, good. Solo nos faltan dos personas. Ojalá se incorporen en el transcurso de la clase. Okay, everybody, let's begin. Welcome. This is Inglés Preintermedio Módulo 1. And that's me, Ivan Doñan, at your service once again. It's Preintermediate 1, Session 5. And today is November the 14th of 2022 or 2022, as you prefer. Let's begin. Today we start Unit 3. Okay. Unit 3. Um, una cuestión acá. Eh, siempre recordemos, algunos me estaban comentando, alcancé a leer en, en, en WhatsApp, que van a mantener la cámara apagada. Eh, está bien. Y en, el, en algunos casos existe motivo para mantenerla apagada. De acuerdo. Sin embargo, siempre que sea posible hay que procurar tenerla aprendida, porque una cosa es lo que yo puedo decir como docente. Yo les puedo decir, miren, no hay problema. Sin embargo, el programa sí requiere que la tengan encendida. Así que ahí ya, ya no tengo yo control al respecto. Así que si por cuestiones de ancho de banda, porque el, el internet les está fallando, por, por la razón que sea, ¿verdad? Necesitan apagarla. Hagamos una excepción. Entonces está bien. Pero de ser posible, sí es de mantenerla encendida. Benjamín. Sí, eh, quería mencionar que como ah, pues por el momento no me encuentro en casa, pero ya me voy dirigiendo hacia ella. Ok, cool. Por eso es que no, no le he encendido. Ok. Porque ahorita voy en la calle yo solito. Ok. Y pues ando con los datos y a veces me fallan y así, pero al llegar a casa le enciendo. Great. Ok, thank you. All right, everybody, let's do this. Let's begin. It's unit three. Uh, Sandra. Uy, no lo oigo, Sandra. Tiene el micrófono apagado. Ok. Ahora me pidieron que mandara un, unos datos. Era por el manual educativo, pero ese no es el mismo que la plataforma de a la que llamamos diariamente. Um, ¿Cómo así? Uh, que hay, hay un manual educativo, eh, me dijeron, manual educativo. Eh, ¿El manual de nivel? Eh, sí, que había un manual, un comprobante de manual. Ah, sí, ese era un comprobante de manual educativo, una hojita que llené hoy, me uh -huh. dijeron que la mandara, pero no sé si hay que bajar ese manual, eh, descargarlo. Si está en la se, plataforma. se puede descargar el manual. Ahorita le ah. muestro. Si usted ingresa acá, Students Manual. Un poquito, he cambiado de computadora y esta está un poquito más lenta que la otra, así que les pido paciencia. Aquí aparece dónde está el botón de descarga. Es uno de estos, creo que es este. Aquí está. Aquí dice Download. Le da clic. Y de ahí ya le va a pedir dónde lo quiere guardar. O si su navegador está configurado para guardar directamente en la carpeta de descargas, lo va a hacer automáticamente. En este caso a mí me está diciendo dónde lo quiere. Entonces, nada más eso hay que hacer. Para descargar el manual solo le da este botón que está aquí. Y ya con eso lo puede bajar. El micrófono, Sandra. Sí, donde dice estudio en manual. 
Mm -hmm. Aquí donde dice Students Manual, uh, PI1. Ah, ya. Yeah. Ahí le da clic y le a este botoncito y ahí está. Ah, ahí está. Gracias. Gracias. Okay, you're welcome. All right. Let's do this. Okay, so it's unit three. How much is it? Tenemos chat. And... Okay, okay, Melissa, thank you. Okay, so how much is it? It's a snapshot. Okay, the meaning of colors in the United States. Let's take a look at this. I'm zooming in a little bit. There is yellow, apparently symbolizes happiness. Okay, orange symbolizes fun. Red, uh, an exciting feeling. Okay, lo emocionante. There is pink, loving. Purple, mysterious. Brown, friendly. Black, sad. Looks like brown, but it says black. Gray, boring. White, pure. Blue, truthful. And green, meaning jealous. Before we continue, do you have any questions about the vocabulary in the color circle? Yes, what is the truthful? Truthful, a person who is honest, a person who tells the truth, a person who is not false, is a truthful person. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks. You're welcome. Any other questions about the vocabulary? Yes, teacher, I have a question. What's your question, Hugo? Uh, this is uh, uh, why? Is it pure? Uh, pure. How do you say uh, pure? Yeah, pure. Pure. Uh, puro. Uh, puro. Mm -hmm. Good. Pure. Innocent. Okay. 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 You. You're welcome. Okay, so here you go. So which words have a positive meaning and which words have a negative meaning? Let's see, happy, does it have a positive meaning or a negative meaning? What do you think? Cesar? It's very positive, teacher. It's very positive, that's right. Okay, thank you, Cesar. What about fun? Does it have a positive meaning or a negative meaning? What do you think? Fun, Hugo. Uh, your microphone? Sorry, it's okay. positive. positive. It's positive, it's very positive, very good. Thank you. What about red, exciting? What do you think? Is it positive or negative? Does it have a positive meaning or a negative meaning? It's positive. Uh, Jeanette? It's positive. Very positive, of course, right? Exciting, emocionante, right? So it's positive, definitely. Good. What about uh, loving? Pink. Roberto Carlos and then Selma for the next one. It's positive. It's positive, yeah. Okay, loving is positive. Thank you. Selma, what about purple? Mysterious. Is it positive, negative, or maybe neutral? Maybe neutral. Maybe neutral. In my opinion, it's neutral. Also your opinion. Yes. It's not bad, <laughs> but it's not good. Okay, so it's like neutral. It depends. Thank you, Selma. Okay. What about the next one? Uh, brown, friendly. Does it have a positive meaning or a negative meaning? Positive. Michelle. And then Ana Patricia. It's positive. Positive. Okay, definitely. Okay, thank you. What about the next one? Ana Patricia. Black, sad, is it positive or negative? It's negative. It's negative, very negative. Yeah. Okay, thank you. What about the next one? Gray, it reads boring. Is it positive, negative? What is that? Roberto Carlos. It's negative. Teacher. It's negative, that's right, yeah. thank you. Okay, yeah. thank you. Uh, what about white, pure? Is it positive, negative? What is it? Very positive. Very positive, says Michelle. Okay, pure, purity, right? Okay, and next one, truthful, represented by the color blue. Is it positive, negative? What do you think? Anna Patricia. 
It's positive. It's positive. Okay. It's sincere, honest. Okay. So yeah, it is positive. Very good. Thank you. And the last one, green, jealous. Is it positive or negative? What do you think? Michelle. Negative. Negative. Michelle, are you jealous? Um, a little no. bit? No. On a scale, on a scale from one to ten, how jealous are you? Maybe five. Five. Okay, it's good. <laughs> All right, nice. In my case, maybe four or three, something like that. Not very jealous. Okay. Okay. Thank you for your participation, everybody. Um, let's continue. Lesson objective. This is the first objective. That was only an introduction to this. In this lesson, participants will listen to a conversation about demonstratives while shopping. In esta clase, los participantes escucharán una conversación sobre pronombres demonstrativos mientras las personas van de compras. That's lesson objective 3.0. Let's do this. And here's a conversation. They're perfect for you. I'm going to play the track. Let me know if you can hear it. Let's see. Oh, look at those ear. Could you hear that? Yes. Okay. Oh, look at those earrings, Maria. They're perfect for you. These red ones? I'm not sure. No, the yellow ones. Oh, these? Hmm. Yellow isn't really a good color for me. Well, that necklace isn't bad. Which one? That blue one right there. How much is it? It's $42. That's expensive. Hey, let me get it for you. It's your birthday present. Happy birthday. That's nice. Page okay. 16. Exercise Whoops. 2. Sorry. Okay, so um, here's the conversation. They're perfect for you. Listen and practice. I need two volunteers, one boy and one girl, to play Steve and Maria. Okay, Michelle, you play Maria. Now one boy, please. Hugo, you play Steve. Okay, let's begin, please. <coughs> okay, continue. I'm, I'm going to zoom in just for you to see better. Yeah, okay, okay. there you go. Uh, oh, look at those earrings, Maria. They're, they're, they're perfect for you. These red ones? I'm not sure. Oh, no, oh not, the, not the yellow one. The yellow ones, huh? The yellow ones. <clears throat> oh, the mm, yellow isn't really a good for me. Color for me, sorry. Well, that's nucleus. Necklace. Uh, nucleus is a uh, back. Which one? Oh, <laughs> that's Maria. Sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. Which one? That's blue. One right there. How much is it? It's $42. That's expensive. Hey, that's me. Get, get it for you. It's your birthday person. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Okay, thank you. Happy thank birthday. you, Hugo and Michelle. Thank you very much. Okay, so the conversation goes. Steve says, oh, look at those earrings, Maria. They're perfect for you. What is the meaning of earrings, by the way? What are earrings? Pendientes, mm -hmm. Pendientes, los aritos. That's right. Thank you, Pamela. Uh, they're perfect for you. And Maria says, these red ones, she's holding them. Look, she says, these red ones? I'm not sure. Then Steve says, no, the yellow ones. So he means these, okay, the yellow ones. Maria says, oh, these? Hmm. Yellow isn't really a good color for me. And Steve says, well, that necklace isn't bad. What necklace? There are necklaces here. Take a look. 
you have a necklace, okay? The one that you use around your neck. Maria says, which one? Steve says, that blue one right there. How much is it? The blue one, I think it's this one. Okay, how much is it? Maria says, it's $42, that's expensive. And Steve says, hey, let me get it for you. It's your birthday present, happy birthday. It's a nice person, okay, $42, it's a lot of money. <laughs> Before we continue, do you have any questions about the vocabulary or the expressions? Selma. Sí, teacher, which one? Uh -huh. la, ya when, la hemos escuchado dos veces, yo sé que es una expresión que significa. <laughs> okay, when you can choose, you have option A and option B. Which one? You need to select one or the other. Which? In Spanish, it is cual. Okay, gracias, teacher. Uh -huh. Okay, you're welcome. Any other questions about the vocabulary or the expressions? No questions? Okay, uh, Roberto Carlos. Who is a necklace? What or is necklace? necklace? Yeah, necklace. Okay, these here are necklaces and you can see Maria. Maria is wearing a necklace. You, do you see? Yeah. It's a piece of jewelry you wear around your neck. Sometimes they're made of gold, sometimes they're made of silver, etc. Hello, Benjamin. Did you want to participate? Uh, yeah, I have a question. What's your question? Um, I need to know when to use one or ones. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's today's lesson. We're going to study that. Mm -hmm. okay. Don't worry, don't worry. Uh-huh, you have a necklace, okay. Collar, says Hugo. Yeah, that's correct. Okay, so what is this? Let's take a look. Lesson objective. By the end of this lesson, participants will be able to use dem demonstrative pronouns like this, these, that, and those to express possible choices. Al final de esta clase, los participantes serán capaces de usar pronombres demonstrativos Este, esta, estos, esto, estos, aquel, aquella, aquellos, aquella, aquellos para expresar posibles elecciones. Okay, now Benjamin is asking about the use of one and ones. Don't worry, we're going to study that today. I have it prepared. So we have the grammar focus. What about the grammar focus here? Demonstratives, one and ones. Now, this is what you'll find in the platform and also it's in the video in section 3.3, .3, as explained by Miss uh, Jessica. Okay, Miss Jessica appears in the video, she explains it very well. But my job is to give extra information about this and also exercises for you to practice. So take a look. First question is, how much is it? Okay, how much is? What is the meaning of that question when you say how much is something? What do you mean? ¿Qué quiere decir uno cuando dice how much is o how much are? Es como referirse a cuánto, pero para preguntar cuando necesito saber el precio de algo. Uh -huh. El precio de algo, cuánto vale, así es. Varios han participado. Thank you very much. Es cuánto vale, cuánto cuesta. So you say, for example, how much is this necklace? This necklace. How much is that necklace? Okay, but now look at this. How much is this necklace? This person is holding the necklace in the hand. Okay, that's why you say this, this necklace. I say, for example, this mouse. Okay, I don't have anything else here to show you. I have this book. Well, no se ve por la cámara. Okay, I start. The boy in the striped pajamas. I say this book etc. So how much is that necklace? Okay, now you see the picture? The person is not touching the next necklace. The necklace is far away. So you say that necklace. This, when things are near, when you can touch them. That, when things are far, when you can't touch them. Okay, 
this one, that one. What up? Uh, Ugo, yes. Eh, sorry, una pregunta. Okay. ¿Verdad que das cuando lo ocupamos como por ejemplo das nucleus es cuando algo está lejos y usted lo señala? O sea, ese es el mm -hmm. collar. Mm -hmm. ah. Ese, ese collar. Ese collar, pero está That's lejos. Right. O sea, él dice es, cuando algo es, lo deja en la mano. Está más, más allá de nuestro alcance. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. En cambio, él dice, el cuando, él dice cuando lo tenés en tus manos. Uh -huh. Cuando está a nuestro alcance. Uh -huh. Bien cerquita o incluso lo podemos palpar, ¿verdad? Uh -huh. Y el, That's right. el, el this eh, es cuando son dos cosas, ¿verdad? Uh, this one right here, yeah, these, right. but that's the next part of the explanation. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's correct. You. You're welcome. So you say, how much are, okay? Now that's plural, okay? When you say, how much is, that's singular. How much are, that's plural. These earrings. Now, that's plural when things are near. I say, for example, these hands. All right. How much are these earrings? How much are those earrings? They are far away. Okay, those earrings right there. How much are those earrings? That's plural. Okay. How much are these? How much are those? Now you can say which one? The blue one. Which ones? The yellow ones. Now, there's some explanation right here, but it's very little. We're going to study that in more detail right now. Take a look. De nuevo, esto es lo que aparece en la plataforma. Esto es lo que está explicado en el video también. Pero ahorita vamos a ver esto con un poquito más de detalle. Veamos acá. This is not in the platform. And it's not in the manual. So this is extra, everybody. Take a look. This, that, these, those. So when do we use this? This is singular, okay? Do you like this picture? You see the lady. She is holding the picture in her hand. It's close to her. Do you like this picture? And then you have these, these, that's plural. For example, she says, these flowers are for you these flowers, plural, and you can touch them. They are near you, okay? These flowers are for you. So when you say this and these, you say this picture, that means this picture here, these flowers, these flowers here. Now there's a difference in pronunciation, by the way, before we continue. The singular form is pronounced i, i. It's a very short sound. Es un sonido bien cortito. E, e, this, this, that's singular. The plural form has a longer sound. It's e, e, como la, la, como la vocal e en español, igualito. E, so you pronounce these, okay? These. Remember the difference in pronunciation. Singular, this, this. Plural, these, these. That's the difference right there. Eso, al principio es un poquito difícil acostumbrarse a, a pronunciar la diferencia entre estas dos palabras, pero poco a poco nos vamos acostumbrando. Lo importante es hacer el esfuerzo. Jennifer Noemí. Sí, me podría... Eh, repetir la pronunciación del plural. Ah, yeah, no problem. Veamos las dos para que nos quede más claro. Singular, this. The sound is e, e. It's a short sound. E, this. The plural form is these. These with the sound e, e. There are two chat entries. Como una sonrisa, dice Hugo. Sí, más o menos. It's like, e. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, that's right. So, remember, this and these. That's the pronunciation. Now, let's take a look at the second part. That is singular. For example, he says, do you like that picture? 
that picture está lejitos, ya no está tan cerca. Do you like that picture? That's singular. In the plural form, those. Who are those people? ¿Quiénes son esas personas? Okay, who are those people? So there you go. That and those. You say that picture, that means that picture there. ¿Verdad? Ese cuadro, esa foto, ese dibujo, allá. Those people, esas personas que están por allá. Okay, those people there. That's the difference between or uh, this and these and that and those. Before we continue, do you have any questions about this? No question. No questions. Okay, no problem. Okay. ¿Quién me puede mostrar ahí en la cámara ahorita algo que tengan ahí a la mano usando this? Por ejemplo, yo digo this mouse. What can you say? What can you show me? This pencil. This pencil, okay, good. Hugo? This is my cell phone. Okay, you say this is my cell phone. Okay, good. Someone else? Pamela? This is my polish. Ah, okay, that's your um, nail polish. Nail okay. Polish? Yes. okay, it's a nail polish. Okay, good. Yo creí que la almohadita de unicornio me iba a mostrar. Okay. All right, Sandra. Um, see, uh, this uh, iPhone. 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 Uh, cell phone. Cell phone. Mm -hmm. Bueno, pero no lo vemos ahí en la pantalla. <laughs> this cell phone, digamos. Ah, hoy sí. This, sí, pero uh, this iPhone puede ser también, ¿verdad? Roberto Carlos. Uh, the microphone. I'm sorry, teacher. This okay. is my pen. This is my pen. Okay. All right. It good. This is my pen. Ah, this is my pen. Could, you say these are because it's plural now. These the, are my pens. Yeah, okay. These are my pens. Good. Thank you. Karen Xiomara and then Nana Patricia. This is my phone. This is my phone, you say. Thank you. Ana Patricia. These my glasses. Okay. So plural now. You say these plural, are. These. These are my glasses. These are my glasses. Aquí está Hiroki, ya lo vi, lo voy a poner asistencia aprovechando. Ya Hello, está. teacher. Hello, Hiroki. Okay. Aprovechando, I have this book. This not notebook. Notebook, yeah. Mm -hmm. Say this notebook. Okay, good. This. All right. What about the plural form? ¿Alguien me puede mostrar algo en plural ahorita? Si son lentes, por ejemplo, eso cuenta como plural, como dijo, uh, creo que Ana Patricia dijo, these glasses. Ok, plural. Vamos buscando así eso. ¿Qué voy a enseñar? ¿Qué voy a enseñar? Ajá. Uh, Pamela. These are gum. What are those? No. No, because of toys are gum. Toys? Are they toys? No, it's a gum that you can mask. Ah, okay. Yes. Is it like candy? Yes, like candy. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> okay, thank you. All right, someone else? Acuérdense de bajar la manita ya después, no les vaya a cansar. Uh huh. No one else. Sandra. Uh, the microphone, please. It's a pen. Okay. Pen. The pronunciation is these pens. These. Pen. Okay. Thank you, Jose Aguilar. What about these eggs? Okay. <laughs> Tenía una bolsita ahí. que le faltaron a mi ex. Uy, no, no. <laughs> okay, so these eggs. Okay. All right. 
acerca de la cocina, o en la cocina está ahí. <ríe> ok. All right. Thank you, uh, Victoria Ingrid. This, this is our market. These are markers. Ok, markers. Good. Ok, thank you. All right. So, um, let's continue right here. So, uh, the next one is this slide. Take a look. We use this, that, these, and those with a noun. For example, this picture, those girls, etc. Or without a noun. Se puede ocupar con un sustantivo o sin él. Si se sobreentiende de qué estamos hablando, no es necesario decir el sustantivo, el noun, después de los demonstratives. Aquí vamos a ver unos ejemplos. Uh, who can help me read the first part? The first example, please. I need a volunteer. First example, please. Okay, Ana Patricia. This hotel is expensive, but it's nice. This hotel is expensive, but it's nice. Okay, good. This hotel is expensive, but it's nice. Right. You say this hotel. Después del demonstrative, ocupamos un sustantivo, que es hotel. This hotel is expensive, but it's nice. Thank you. The second one. Volunteer, please. Michelle. Who's that girl? I don't, I don't know. know. <laughs> Speaking of jealous. Okay. Who's that girl? Is it, I don't know. I don't know. Okay. Thank you, Michelle. All right, so uh, the next one, number three, Janet. Do you like these shoes? I bought them last week. Mm -hmm. Do you like these shoes? I bought them last week. Okay, that's right. Do you like these shoes? Ocupamos these y luego el sustantivo yes. shoes. Good, thank you, Janet. The next one, please. Example number four, who can help me read it? Or I can read it. Okay, Selma. And then Pamela for the next one. Those apples look nice. Can I have one? Uh -huh. Those apples look nice. Can I have one? Okay, those apples. So that's those are the uh, demonstratives with a noun. What about demonstratives without a noun? Uh, Hiroki is raising his hand. No sé si me quiere hacer una pregunta o si quiere leer el siguiente ejemplo. No, leer el siguiente ejemplo. Ah, oh, okay, okay. Without a noun. Um, this is a nice hotel, but it's very expensive. Okay, thank you. You say this is a nice hotel, but it's very expensive. Si se fijan, no hubo que decir this hotel. Solo dijimos this. ¿Por qué? Porque se entiende de qué estamos hablando. En la misma oración estamos mencionando el hotel. So, this is a nice hotel, but it's very expensive. Thank you, Hiroki. The next one, Jennifer Noemi. Excuse me, is this your bag? Oh, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Excuse me, is this your bag? Para que alguien pueda preguntar eso, se sobreentiende que tendría que tenerlo en la mano y estárselo mostrando, ¿verdad? Mire, es suyo. Is this your bag? Oh, yes. Thank you. Okay, Jennifer, thank you very much. So, the next one, please, who can help me? Jocelyn. Who's that? Who is that person? Mm -hmm. Who is that? That means, who is that person? No tenemos que decir person para entenderlo. Solo decimos, who's that? ¿Quién es ese? Who's that person? Thank you, Jocelyn. Hugo. Ok. El leer el ejemplo. Which the, was, the last one. Uh -huh. Which. Uh, sorry, ¿cómo se dice la otra palabra? Uh, la pronunciación. Which, which shoes? Ah, so, which, mm -hmm. which shoes do you like better? This or this? Which those. shoes do you like better? These or These those? Or those. Uh -huh. yeah. ¿Cuáles zapatos te gustan más? ¿Estos o esos? O puede ser estos o aquellos también. You say these, plural, when things are near. Those, 
plural, when things are far. Okay. All right. Uh, Benjamin dice, sorry for leaving, I have some connection problems. Uh, Benjamin tiene problemas de conexión, pero parece que ya volvió. Quiero ver. Creo que lo vi por ahí. O quizá, ah, no, ahí está. Okay. Welcome back. Sí, acá Benjamin. Estoy. Okay, thank you. Welcome back. Okay, so that's uh, without a noun. Okay, so with a noun and without a noun. But what about this? Speaking of Benjamin, he had the question. One and ones, ¿para qué se utilizan? It's simple. Estos son pronombres. ¿Para qué utilizamos los pronombres? Para sustituir un nombre, un sustantivo. Puede ser propio o puede ser común. Entonces, para, cuando ocupamos one and ones, one singular, ¿qué dice él? ¿Qué va a ok, 842, oh my God. Which one do you want? Which one do you want? And he says this one. Veamos, ¿por qué utiliza la palabra one este vendedor y por qué la utiliza también el comprador? ¿Por qué será? Uh, because this is... Singular. Okay, one. that's that's one reason. Okay, we use yeah. the word one because it's singular. Okay, that's one reason. But there is another reason. Thank you, Hiroki. Because it's a project that you can see. Exactly, because it's something that you can see. Okay. No tiene que decirle which hat do you want y el otro no tiene por qué contestar this hat. Porque ya sabemos que estamos hablando de sombreros. Es lo único que tiene a la venta, por lo menos en ese mostrador. Entonces, con solo decirle, which one do you want? ¿Cuál quiere? And he says, this one. Este de aquí. Este. No tiene que decir, this hat. Porque ya se sabe que estamos hablando de sombreros. Así se utiliza one. Se utiliza en sustitución de un sustantivo. ¿Ok? Para no decir which hat do you want y que él diga this hat, solo se dice which one do you want, this one. Por supuesto, para utilizar este tipo de pronombre, el interlocutor tiene que saber de antemano de qué estamos hablando. Si yo de la nada llegara y les dijera a ustedes, hey, which one do you prefer? Ustedes me van a decir, ¿de, ¿de qué está hablando, teacher? ¿Está hablando de la diapositiva? ¿Está hablando del fondo de la pantalla que tiene? Eh, ¿De la camisa que anda puesta? ¿De, ¿De qué está hablando? Entonces, tendría yo que, ustedes tendrían que saber de qué estoy hablando yo para poder utilizar one. No tiene sentido utilizarlo si el interlocutor no sabe de qué están hablando. En este caso, como dijo Pamela, es bastante evidente que están hablando de sombreros. Así que se puede utilizar libremente. Which one do you want? This one. Okay. So you can see here, which one means which hat? One means a hat, a car, a flower, a person, etc. And there is an example. Which car is yours? ¿Cuál carro es el tuyo? Which car is yours? This one or that one? Y aquí ocupamos one para no repetir qué palabra. Carro. Mm -hmm. So you don't repeat car. Okay, Cesar My wants car. to say something. Okay. Okay, yeah, that's right. Car. Correct. Okay. You say one because you don't want to repeat the word car. Okay. All right. And what about once? It's the same idea, but it's plural. Okay, so she's selling flowers. She has red flowers and white flowers. Probably these are roses. So she says, which ones do you want? ¿Cuáles quiere? Okay, which ones? And he says, the white ones. Es muy evidente que estamos hablando de flores, así que no tiene que decirle, which flowers do you want? Y él no tiene que contestar, the white flowers. Simplemente ocupamos ones. Which ones do you want? The white ones. So which ones mean, which means, I'm sorry, which flowers? Ones can refer to hats, cars, 
flowers, people, etc. There's an example. Which flowers do you want? These or those? O también puede decir these ones. Oops, aquí me faltó una S. Vamos a corregir de inmediato. Tendría que salir. Ah, hoy sí. Okay, these ones or those ones. Which flowers do you want? These or those? Or these ones? Those ones. Before we continue, do you have any questions about this piece of grammar right here? ¿Alguna duda? ¿Consulta? No questions. Uh, no questions. Okay, great. Uh, let's see who was... Ah, Benjamin was asking. Um, is this clear? Is yeah. There's someone in the chat. Okay. Okay. Yeah, Thank you. Word. Okay. Thank you. All right. Melissa says no teacher. Okay. Great. Okay. Happy. It's um, it's clear. Okay. So what about the next one? You have the and one. And there are some examples. There's two examples. I don't like the black jacket, but I like the brown one. No me gusta. La chaqueta negra, pero me gusta la café. Okay, so, but I like the brown one. Para no repetir jacket, usamos one, the brown one. You can say, don't buy that camera. Buy the other one. It's cheaper. Better quality, etc. So, don't buy that camera. Buy the other one. That's the idea. You can also use it in plural form. The ones. I don't like the red shoes, but I like the green ones, okay? I like the green ones. Me gustan los verdes, esos zapatos verdes. So I don't like the red shoes, but I like the green ones. Para que ocupamos ones, para no volver a decir shoes, para no decir, but I like the green shoes. You don't want to sound repetitive. The next one, don't buy those apples, buy the other ones. Comprar los otros, okay? Buy the other ones. Also, you can use A or N and one. For example, you have a cup and you say, this cup is dirty. Can I have a clean one? ¿Ah? ¿Me pueden dar una limpia? Una taza que sí esté limpia. Can I have a clean one? Okay. That cookie was good. I'm going to eat another one, okay? Say that cookie was good, delicious. I want another one, quiero otras, okay? I'm going to eat another one. You can also use it in plural form, but if you use it in plural form, you have to use some, okay? Very important, some and ones. These cups are dirty. Can we have some clean ones? Nos pueden dar unas que estén limpias. Can we have some clean ones? My shoes are very old. I'm going to buy some new ones. Voy a comprar unos nuevos. Before we continue, do you have any questions? Me miro con cara de confundido un poquito. O es mi imaginación. <laughs> ok. So, so. so. <laughs> ok. Pamela. Ok, Pamela. Yes. I remember that um, is a rule that you can use when you Mm, when you say something with A or M, but I, ah, but I okay. can't remember that yet. Okay, okay, no problem. I'm going to explain that. Vamos a ver. A and N. Pero antes de explicarlo, 
Quiero ver si alguien me puede dar una idea. ¿Cuándo es que se utiliza E y cuándo se utiliza N? En términos generales. Uh -huh. um, el E se utiliza cuando la palabra que sigue eh, lleva una consonante y an cuando la palabra siguiente es que inicia con una vocal. Ok. Thank you, Benjamin. Casi, casi, casi que sí, pero no exactamente. Um, I casi, casi. That mm -hmm. is, that is um, for a singular? Singular? Yeah. Ah, well, yeah, you nice. use A and N for singular uh -huh. nouns, both for singular nouns. That is correct. Uh, me estaba levantando la mano ahí, alcancé a ver. Karina. Ah, Karina. Sí, <laughs> eso iba a decir de que A era para a singular and A and para plural. No, both are singular. No. Okay. Okay. Both are singular. Vaya. Aqui eh, nos compartió. Uh -huh. Who wants to participate? Uh, ah, and Pamela. But you can use it when it's a, 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 a count. Mm -hmm. For example, a cup. Yes, a cup of tea. A you cup of tea. Mm -hmm. Yes. Ah, uh -huh. countable. Can... Okay, yeah. You can countable use a. Countable. But yeah, A and N are singular. So you always use them with singular countable nouns. Siempre se utilizan con nombre singular contable. Vaya, les hacía esta pregunta porque muchas veces en, estamos en clases de inglés y a veces sucede que eh, quien explica esto por lo general lo explica de una forma incorrecta. A veces no sé si es por pereza de no explicarlo completo o si de verdad no sabe la persona que lo estaba explicando, a lo mejor cuando hemos recibido clases lo digo por experiencia porque me ha pasado a mí también, cuando yo hace varios años me lo explicaron así, me decían, bueno mira, si comienza con una consonante vas a ocupar A si comienza con una vocal vas a ocupar N pero en realidad no funciona así funciona con el sonido de la siguiente palabra no con la letra con la que comienza por ejemplo Vamos a ocupar A plus a consonant sound. Let me make this larger. It's late, very late. Aquí rapidito. Consonant sound. Okay, for example, you say a cookie, a clock, a pen, a book, etc. No es que porque comienza con una consonante vamos a ocupar A, sino más bien porque la palabra comienza con el sonido de una consonante. ¿Cuál es el sonido principal de cookie? El primero es k -k cookie, clock, k -k clock, pen, pen, book, b -b 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 book. Comienza con el sonido de una consonante. ¿Ok? Veamos esto, la diferencia entre estas dos palabras, house and hour. Si ustedes se fijan, bueno, antes de eso vamos acá, vamos a utilizar n plus, sorry, un poco espacio tengo aquí, n plus vowel sound. Ok, for example, you say an orange, an egg, Uh, what else? An apple, etc. De nuevo, no es porque comiencen con una vocal, sino porque comienzan con el sonido de una vocal. An orange, o, oh, o, oh, orange. An egg, e, eh, e, eh, e, eh, egg. An apple, a, 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 apple. Para explicar esto con mayor eficacia, vamos a utilizar estas dos palabras, house and hour. Si usted se fija, ambas comienzan con una letra H. 
Entonces, si decimos, ah, bueno, comienza con una consonante, entonces va a ir, una, va a ir acá con A, pero no exactamente, porque una se pronuncia house, comienza con house, it's a consonant sound, y la otra se dice hour. The H is silent, you don't pronounce it. You don't say hour, no, you say hour, hour. Por lo tanto, la palabra comienza con el sonido de una vocal, con el sonido a, a, hour, hour. Por lo tanto, si los clasificamos, vamos a decir a house, pero la otra va a ser an hour. Así es como va. Esto ya casi no se ven porque, bueno, esto eran de mi época, pero tal vez se acuerdan algunos de los MP3 players. Unas maquinitas que ocupábamos antes, donde, bueno, antes de Spotify, antes de guardar toda la música en el teléfono, uno andaba los MP3 players. Entonces, si yo quiero decir que tengo un MP3 player, ¿cómo voy a decir? A MP3 player or an MP3 player? Um. An. Okay. That's correct. Porque a pesar que comienza con una consonante, el sonido inicial de la palabra es el de una vocal. Decimos MP3 player. E, e, MP3 player. Por lo tanto, es an MP3 player. Ahora bien, esta regla tiene una excepción, que es el sonido U. Mucho cuidado. El sonido U es el sonido de una vocal, pero es la excepción de esta regla. Así que cuando una palabra comienza con la vocal U, tiene que tener mucho cuidado usted. Si el sonido inicial es you, entonces eso rompe la regla, es la excepción. Veamos, si yo digo la palabra, digamos, umbrella, y la palabra university, umbrella, usted dice, ah, 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 umbrella, umbrella, umbrella. Ok, that's a vowel sound, so you say an umbrella. Será esto más grande, an umbrella. Luego dice university, usted dice you, you, you. Ah, that's also the sound of a vowel, el sonido de una vocal. Pero este sonido es la excepción. Cuando una palabra comienza con una U y el sonido es you, you, entonces va a ir con a, a university, a unique person, a uniform. Todas estas palabras comienzan con el sonido you, you. Vamos a poner acá you, digámosle así. Es la, ups, es la excepción de esta regla. Y así es que se utiliza a or n. Uh -huh. Siempre acuérdense, basado en el primer sonido de la siguiente palabra, y no si es consonante o vocal. Claro, eso puede ser un indicador inicial, pero nos podemos confundir si nos vamos solo por eso. That's how it is. Ok, explicación aparte, porque eh, eh, para, para contestar la pregunta de Pamela, ¿verdad? Do you understand? Uh, You're welcome. Yeah. Ok, great. All right, um, we're running out of time, so I guess we're going to do the exercises tomorrow. Let's see, teníamos esto, se ve un poquito feo, así que me tocó reescribirlo para que se viera mejor. Okay, but uh, we don't have time right now, it's nine, so I need to call attendance for a second time. Everybody, pay close attention, vamos a ver, se me falta una persona. Brenda Adriana, is Brenda Adriana here? Brenda Adriana? We have a chat. Um, 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 umbrella, dice Karen, ¿sí? <ríe> como que es canción de la, bueno, no, no sé quién la canta, pero hay una canción que dice Umbrella. Rihanna. Rihanna. I'm sorry? Rihanna, ok. <ríe> ok, yeah. Um, 
Ok. Uh, bueno, no está Brenda, entonces. No. Ok, listen. Uh, muy bien, ¿cómo vamos con esto acá? Eh, siempre les invito a participar, participen mucho. Siempre también el recordatorio amigable de levantar la manita virtual para evitar que todos hablemos al mismo tiempo, porque a veces cuando, digamos, yo pregunto algo y hablan como cinco personas a la vez, yo digo, bueno, alguien me contestó correcto, pero no sé quién fue, eh, de tanta gente que uno está escuchando. Aquí en la pantalla solo me salen cinco personas al mismo tiempo en una fila. Cuando habla alguien, automáticamente sale la persona al principio de la fila, pero cuando hablan varios, ahí me quedo yo, ¿quién fue? ¿Quién fue? Así que siempre recordemos levantar la mano virtual para participar. Lo otro también es eh, la cámara, ¿verdad? Como les mencionaba al principio, en algunas circunstancias, como han explicado algunos de los compañeros, digamos, es, es difícil encenderla porque a lo mejor no conviene, a lo mejor los datos son insuficientes, a lo mejor, eh, no sé, el lugar no es apropiado para hacerlo. De acuerdo, no hay problema, pero en la medida de lo posible es de encenderla porque es requisito del programa. Roberto Carlos. No solamente, teacher, bueno, lo voy a decir en, en español porque es algo extenso, nada más felicitarle en el aspecto de la clase de este día porque... Oh. Al menos siento de que lo he ido haciendo paso por paso y no se ha ido deteniendo en algunos aspectos que nos cuesta a veces la dramática, ¿verdad? Y más que todo en esos casos, pero sí, o sea, lo ha hecho excelente. Así que felicidades ahí. Thank you very much. <ríe> muchas gracias, muchas gracias. Y gracias a ustedes, ¿verdad? Por, por estar siempre pues aquí en la clase, por participar activamente. Ah, y eso es lo último que quería decirles. Um, algunos compañeros siempre me participan, lo cual es excelente, me encanta que participen, pero hay otros que no les conozco la voz, ¿verdad? Así que, um, por favor, ¿verdad? Participemos en la medida de lo posible. A, a veces yo entiendo que estamos cansados, a veces decimos, llego a la clase y ah, yo lo que quiero es ir a cenar, ir a ver la tele un ratito, irme a acostar, pero no, tengo clase. Pero tratemos, ¿verdad? Aunque estemos un poquito cansados de hacer el esfuerzo, de participar un poco y así enriquecemos, ¿verdad? El proceso de enseñanza y aprendizaje de todos, ¿verdad? Todos aprendemos. Yo también aprendo de todas estas experiencias. Ok, everybody. Um, thank you. And uh, I will see you tomorrow. Take good care and good night. Good night, teacher. Good night, teacher. Good night. See you later. See you later. Bye bye. See you tomorrow. It's a good presentation. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay. I have to go. <laughs> Take care. Bye. Bye bye. <laughs>